Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yong Tsing, and I'll be your MC for this program, Why Politics? Before we begin, I would like to inform you there will be a Q&A session following our panel discussion. So feel free to send in your questions via Slido using the event code hashtag askvga 2023 or the link you can find in the description below. Now, please extend a very warm welcome, or should I say welcome back to our speaker, Assistant Professor Wallet. Hello, everyone. So welcome. So now I am wearing a different hat. I'll be speaking about why you should be studying PPGA, why you should be studying politics, what's the importance, what do our graduates do, and, and so on. So now I will try to make PPGA as attractive to you guys as possible. Okay. So before we begin, I wanted to, and throughout the, the talk, as and when, I'll get Yong Chin to chime in as well. Okay. So so before we begin, I really wanted to get your sense on, on a particular issue. And there is, there is a particular motivation to this exercise. Okay. So please go to Slido okay, and type this number in. And there is a question that uh, I wanted you guys to answer. Is voting in Singapore 100% secret? And don't worry, as you guys know, on Slido, it is anonymous. Okay, so go to Slido, type this in this number. I'll give a couple of minutes and I will read out the, uh, the results to you as they come in. Okay, so do you believe voting in Singapore is 100% secret in the sense that nobody will be able to find out who you voted for? The government will not be able to find out who you voted for. Okay, so go to Slido and, and vote and then we'll see. So uh, there are two votes that have, have come in so far. Three. Okay. So continue. And I will show the results in a while. I'll read out the results to you. <clears throat> so you can say if you're unsure as well, right? So voting... Is voting secret you think it is, or you are unsure, or you think it's absolutely not secret? So I'll just give one more minute. Just a few more seconds. All right, you guys can continue voting. Uh, I'll just I'll just move on, uh, but you guys can continue voting. So as you guys would, uh, those who participated would be able to see, right, the results. So 50% said no, they do not believe voting is secret. 20% unsure, so 30% believe it is absolutely secret. Now, the every political observer, every independent political observer, including myself, has have has always said that voting in Singapore is one hundred percent secret, meaning the government does not and cannot track who voted for whom. Every uh, the the government has said that the opposition has said that every international observer has said that every political scientist has said that, but somehow many Singaporeans believe that it is not secret, right? So why is that the case? Right? And we really have to think of this as puzzling, right? The government tells us that it is secret. The opposition doesn't contest the fact that it's secret, but there is this urban myth that goes around thinking that it's not secret. Now, as someone who has studied the process, I can tell you that it is 100% secret. From the moment your ballot is cast until it's incinerated eventually. Right? The process is witnessed by one person of the opposition, an opposition representative, at least one. 
So that's why the opposition is extremely confident that it's secret. But I know even some family members of mine believe it's not, right? So what explains this disconnect between reality and perception? Right? Is it rational for people to believe that? What, what does rationality even mean for voters, for citizens? Right? And those are some of the things really that we discuss in public policy and global affairs, right? So, and that's really just a teaser. And to set up what I'll be talking about today, which is basically PPGA. And what is PPGA? why you should be studying politics intellectually and practically as well. <clears throat> and Yongshin is a soci sociology major and his second major is PPGA. So feel free to chime in as well uh, whenever you feel the need to. Okay. All right. Thank you. So what is uh, PPGA, right? Public Policy and Global Affairs. Well, basically we prepare students for a career uh, and leadership role in the public and private sectors. And I'll give you some numbers later on on where our students go. And there are four subfields within. Uh, so this is the equivalent of politics or political science in other universities. So it's essentially the same. So there are four subfields. The first is international relations. So we study relationships between countries. When and why do wars happen? When does, when does war not happen? Why does peace ensue? What are the institutions? international institutions needed to ensure that, and so on. The second one would be comparative politics. So you study domestic politics, but be, and you compare between countries, right? For instance, why is the PAP more electorally resilient than AMNO in Malaysia? Even though they both started off as the parties in power at independence, but AMNO lost power in 2018, it's back now, but as a secondary party, whereas PAP is still firmly in power. Why is that? So why is populism on the rise in Western Europe and in America, even in other parts of the world, Asia and Latin America? Populism meaning people who mobilize, elites who mobilize, political elites who mobilize the population against a supposedly corrupt elite. Why is that on the rise? Right? So these are the sorts of things that we, we study. Political theory, the third element or the third facet of PPGA, it deals with the existential questions of life, right? So what's the trade-off between freedom and liberty? Why should you have more freedom for, uh, sorry, uh, between liberty and stability? What's the trade-off between liberty and security? Why should you have liberty instead of security? Or why should you have security instead of liberty? What is democracy? Is democracy the best system? What other systems are available? So it really deals with the philosophical questions of politics. And the final one is public policy and administration. It's essentially about the execution of policies, right? So when governments think about formulate policies and how you execute it, this is the more technical aspect of PPGA. And we have a few core courses. If you can see it, uh, we have four core courses which pertain to each of the subfields that I've talked about. So international relations, political theory, public admin, and fundamentals of politics is intro to comparative politics, essentially. And you have a politics of Singapore module, which I'm teaching, and Yong Chin was in my class. There's the politics of Singapore module, and it's compulsory for all uh, PPGA students. And the other one is you have the graduation project, of course. Uh, this is uh, a core course in a way, but you have to qualify for it. and if you qualify for it, but you do not want to do it, you have to ask for exemption. So this is the final year project or is the dissertation basically, right? Your honest thesis in a way. So I give you, a, let me give you a table or two tables of the modules. And it, from these tables, you can see what are the issues that we deal with, right? So under politics and international relations, so this is political theory, comparative politics, and international relations. So you see we have uh, politics and government in Southeast Asia, borderless migration, China's foreign policy, media and politics, parties and elections, and so on. Under public admin, you have public admin in Singapore, you have science tech and public policy, you have policy evaluation, you have public admin in Southeast Asia, the making of e-government, and others, right? And this is really a wide variety of modules that are that, that is offered to students and really covers a lot of ground. So you can see that 
we do both thematically. We deal with topics thematically like media and politics and also regionally by region, like China, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and so on. And why should you be doing politics, right? This goes to the second. So why should you, you do, be doing PPG, a second part of my talk, right? So intellectually, right? Well, the first thing is to cure political apathy, right? And I die a little bit inside right? when somebody says, oh, I don't, uh, I am actually politically apathetic. And they feel, they feel proud of it when they say I am politically apathetic. And my response is always the same. You may not care about politics, but politics damn sure cares about you. So the rise of the price of bread is because of politics, right? So you better be aware of what's going on in the world of politics if you want to live your life, right? Otherwise, you are leaving every single thing to other people, right? And that's not really a wise way of living life, right? Second, to understand the world better. So even though we are a university based in Singapore and Asia, and we take a lot of pride in that, in dealing with Singapore public policy and Asian public policy, but we also have to understand the world. There is no way to understand the international system without understanding US politics, for instance. There just isn't. So we have to understand the world in order for us to really develop better policies to understand if you are from Singapore, to understand Singapore's place in the global system. If you are not from Singapore, it doesn't matter uh, because we can still we still need to understand the world, whether you are from a big or a small country, right? And that's when we can really develop better policies. And the third, which is crucial for employers, and this is true of all triple S uh, majors, but it's especially true for uh, public policy and global affairs. It's really, we really train our students to be develop a critical mind, not a skeptical mind, because if you are skeptical, you cannot live your life, right? You cannot live your life in peace, basically. But you must be critical. You must always be critical about every single thing, right? And employers do value this, right? And they see the critical thinking in our students and they find that this is attractive. Right? And of course, the fourth one, I, I always say to know that if you're a PPGA student, for sure you believe that voting is secret already, right? So, Yong Chin, I wanted to ask you, right? Do you feel that PPGA has contributed to you in terms of this uh, developing this critical mind of yours? I think definitely um, it's contributed quite a lot. Um, you know, like it, especially in classes, we have all these sort of like dialogue sessions and I think we can get quite argumentative about a lot of the things that we want to talk about. I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people say PPGA students are very irritating. They always have an opinion on something. <laughs> and I, I think PPG has contributed to that. They really, it has really helped me develop an opinion on most things in the world or like most things, you know, you see on the news and actually I have people coming up to me and asking me, like, hey, what do you think about um, this particular article or what do you think about this policy the government has put out? And then you, you, you have some sort of opinion ready to go because, um, you know, PPG as a program has trained you to think about policy in, in, in some, some ways or some specific ways that, you know, that you should form something about an opinion about it and you should be able to state your case and defend it properly. Yeah, so I think it, it definitely has like contributed to that idea of it and it has helped me, you know, in my internships with, with all the sort of our policy analysis that we have. Right, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Yong Chin. And uh, you are right. I think some people say, oh, PPGA students like to argue right, until the cows come home. And partly we train them too, right? We train them. And even in our classes, as you as you know, Yong Chin, Sometimes yeah. it doesn't matter what your personal opinion is. We ask you to argue for the other side. Because if you can't argue for the other side, you don't really understand your own position. Right? But at the end of the day, we, we want you to take a position. Don't sit on the fence. After understanding the other side, you still need to come to your own conclusion. And yeah. the professors yeah. never tell the students, oh, this is how you should think. This is the right answer. No, we tell them that these are the variety of answers. Try to understand as much as possible. But you make up your mind. You are an adult. And we... We treat you like adults as well, right? Yeah, so thank you. Thank you so much uh, yeah. for that. Yeah, so why? what are the practical elements of learning PPGA and politics, right? So one, uh, there's uh, opportunities for learning. Uh, it's a small, it's the smallest program in Triple S, but selective program with closer interaction. I think Yongchin mentioned just now, the classes are always boisterous. Maybe not, they are not irritating. Maybe they are, boisterous right and 
uh, the the students are always, but it's always cordial after everything, right? Like it doesn't lead to physical fights or anything. But I think a good uh, a good uh, environment for arguments is needed in the social sciences, right? Intellectual arguments. You need to thresh out difficult ideas, uh, and you need to debate with each other to understand. And uh, PPJ is also much smaller than the other uh, programs, as you know, Yongchen, uh, yeah. compared to sociology as well. Yeah, classes are a lot smaller. Yes. Yeah, the classes are smaller, so that's that's good. There's more interaction uh, with students. I can tell you, I know every single of my students, the ones that I take for seminars and tutorials. I know every single one of them uh, by name. Of course, the ones that I do not take for tutorials, I wouldn't know because the lectures are hundred plus. But the ones that I do for seminars, I know all of them by name. I know them personally. At the end of the year or during Hari Raya, I will always invite all my students to my house. Uh, not all of them come, of course, but a lot of them do come. You know? uh, and that wouldn't be possible if I had like 300 students, right? Uh, that wouldn't be possible. Uh, so it's interdisciplinary. So for sure, we focus on both Singapore and international society. It's a direct honors program like all Triple S programs. So you do not, you come in as a PPGA major or you come in as an econs major in triple S. You don't come in and then after year one, you, you major, right? And there are a lot of double or joint or second uh, majors uh, in terms of the choices for minors as well. So the two, uh, two double major programs we have for PPGA are econs and public policy and environmental sciences and public policy, which is both are extremely, extremely useful. And if you want to get a job, uh, those are really uh, competitive degrees. And we really uh, prepare people for a career in public administration, but also in the, in the private sector. And like all triple S majors, we have uh, opportunities for independent projects, uh, exchange and internship opportunities. There are many, many uh, opportunities. Yongqing, just now you mentioned that uh, you went for internship. You want to share a little bit? I've gone for quite a few internships with, um, um, so my internships are mainly in the civil service. So I've done internships at the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of National Development, as well as the Prime Minister's Office. So a lot of it has to do with uh, policy research. And I think um, part of, a lot of it has to do with the fact that, um, you know, you come from, I think, uh, from NTU, which uh, certainly helps quite a bit. Um, there is um, um, opportunities that you can explore with the kind of um, sort of credentialism that you have. And then after, of course, you get your professors or your um, uh, yeah, the people who teach you to write you recommendations and then testimonials that help you get into these internships as well. Thank you so much. And I and really, uh, what Yongchen is saying, and that is Yongchen, of course, is one of our more outstanding students. But many many students uh, do go into the the ministries that he talked about, right? Minister of Finance, Prime Minister's Office. Uh, you have all the other ministries as well, which I will talk about. And second of all, of course, the quality of teaching. And don't take my word for it. You go to the website. And this is not just for PPGA, but for Triple S as well. But I'm talking about PPGA specifically. You look at the professors and where they got their PhDs from. This is a list. I will not read uh, them out one by one. But you have from Cambridge, LSE, Kings. I was from King's College. And others are from the top uh, universities in the States. And uh, of course, this doesn't mean everything but it means something right so the quality of teaching in ppga i would say is is really high and it's always reflected in our uh, student feedback uh, or teaching scores as well and finally and this is extremely important right we a lot of our students enter the public service uh, i'll show some data here but not all of them so some of them enter the media so one of our uh, students is a journalist in south china morning post uh, she was in today and SCMP poached her. Mm, education, so some of them become teachers, but also uh, some of them are in, uh, the, not, not in MOE, but they are still in education. Some of them join civil society organizations, as I said, uh, the journalists, we have journalism, uh, students, students who enter journalism, we have those who enter research, of course, public management, policy analysts, so some of them are in uh, consultancy firms, some of them are in media monitoring companies, some of them are uh, in, I, I even mentioned just now Bitcoin, one of them is in a Bitcoin company, but doing policy uh, research. 
So not the technical aspects of Bitcoin, but in terms of the research, the market research and so on. So our other private firms, all private firms and agencies require knowledge of public affairs and politics. Every single one, right? So your, your opportunities are really abound. Of course, there are some specific jobs that you cannot you cannot enter you cannot enter the industry, right? You can't be a doctor, a lawyer, maybe even an engine. But there are many engineering firms that you can still enter because you need uh, knowledge of policy and you can do the PR role and so on, right? So just based on our own data, our graduates uh, about so if you count government ministries and state boards, so that's about sixty to sixty-five percent enter the government. And the rest would be 30 to 35 private firms or voluntary organizations, right? So this, of course, differs by, by year to year, but roughly 65, 35, you can say, or 70, 30, 70 in the, uh, in the government and 30% in private sector. And why? Why are our graduates attractive? As Yongchen said, the, the brand name for sure and professors writing letters. I've written plenty of letters for my students. And uh, not just that, but also they value the 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 skills that PPGA students have in terms of critical thinking, in terms of writing, our students write very well. And in terms of speaking, a lot of times speaking is more important than writing in the workforce. So one of the things that our, our major forces students do is speak in class. Right? And a lot, uh, and I, I will get Yong Chin's thoughts on this. And a lot of times when people from other, other majors come to PPGA classes, right, they say, oh, why do the students talk so much? I, do, I feel like I don't want to speak so much. And I, I do get this. So about 20% of most of our courses right, are graded based on class participation. So I always get this every semester. I'm very shy. Can I change that 20%? Can you substitute it with uh, an essay? They rather write an essay, a 2000, another 2,000 word essay rather than speak up in class. And I say, I cannot do that. You know why? Because... It's my job to train you to speak as well. Because speaking, you're going to find that speaking is very important when you're going to work. How you formulate arguments, how you think through issues, right? Uh, so, Yong Chin, do you want to say anything on that, on what I said? Yeah, I think definitely when I was... Because uh, I, didn't, I didn't do my second major until uh, about year two. So, in sociology, a lot, um, you know, I, I usually speak up a lot in sociology classes as well. Um, but when I went to PPG, I realized that, you know, actually there were more people speaking up with me. And then, you know, uh, we had a lot of like, uh, there, are, there are a variety of opinions and views that you have sort of have to like, when you speak out, you have to defend yourself as well. And it really adds to how you um, go about discussing an issue, how you reach a, con a conclusion. And I think like Prof. said, it is quite important in the workplace. Uh, when I've gone to my internships, uh, I, I've, I've actually had to sort of defend my ideas um, from uh, uh, like my colleagues and stuff, I, I have to say, like you know, why we think a certain step is the correct step. Yeah. So, so, so things like that and really, really taught me how to um, not just argue, but also argue in a proper way. Like how right. to not get like very defensive, how to not be too aggressive, but how to um, make make how 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 the point of arguing isn't to um, prove your point, but is to make the other person understand your point. I think that's right. something that's especially important. Yeah, be, being firm without being aggressive, that is such a fine line. It's not easy, right? I think even sometimes now I, I fall on the wrong side of the line, right? But the way, the only way to be better at it is to do it more, right? And and uh, I'm glad you brought up your internship experience. It's extremely crucial for the workforce. And as far as we are concerned at PPGA, at Triple S, we are preparing you for the real world, right? So we will be as empathetic as possible, at the same time, we want to prepare you for the real world. We want to make sure you are adequately prepared to get jobs, right? And that's our number one, uh, number one concern to develop you holistically, which involves you getting good jobs, right? And final slide, and I think this is very important for people who are who want to come in. This is for triple S, and you have the interdisciplinary double major, so the including the ECPP students as well. So you can see, this is a COVID year, by the way. So this, uh, within a few months of graduation, PPGA students about 84. So compared to the others, it's it's not as high compared to the others in triple S, right? But the salaries are higher than everybody else in triple S, right? And again, I must emphasize, 83 is, is pretty high still, um, but we expect it to be much higher this year because it's a non-COVID year, right? 
So uh, this is within six months uh, of graduation, right? So we will expect uh, higher numbers, but our salaries are, are pretty high. And in fact, just based on my own informal survey of last year's uh, graduating batch, I am extremely confident that the numbers will be even more positive this year, right? And that really speaks to a few, a couple of things. One is employers value uh, the training of PPGA students. And the other thing is that NTU PPGA already has a brand of sorts. And people know that, uh, oh, because a lot of our graduates have entered the workforce, they say, oh, okay, I know what I am getting from an NTU PPGA graduate, which wasn't the case a few years ago when PPGA just started. Yeah. So that's all I have. I am happy to take any questions and Yongchen will help me answer some questions as well. So if you have questions uh, about the program or questions to Yongchen as a student, feel free to ask them, type them in the Slido or in well, thanks, thanks, Prof. Wallet for that uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, well, you guys know the link to our Slido. It's in the uh, description of our uh, YouTube video. So please feel free to uh, send those questions in. We actually have a few already. So, uh, Prof. Wallet, uh, if you don't mind, can get a ball rolling. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, one of the very first questions we have, a uh, very interesting one, is: um, Do I need any political background to join PPGA? Uh, what, what do you think? So, uh, that's a a very uh interesting way of phrasing the question so political background meaning what do you need to be from a political party or what? so uh, but anyway the answer is no uh, you do not need any political background uh, and there is no subject of politics right? so i i assume that it's not it's not political background in the in a sense that you are from a party but there's no subject politics at jc level or poly level right and uh, the closest maybe you can say is general paper but it's quite different those who have done general paper would know that it's quite different from, from studying politics in uni or PPGA in uni. Of course, there are some skills, writing skills that you can transfer, but there are some things that they are just completely different. So you do not need any uh, background in that sense. What about history? Do you need to be a history student? No, you do not need to have been a history student. Yongchen, did you do history last time? No, I did geography. Right. So you don't need to have been a history student. Would some historical knowledge help? Of course it would. I wouldn't lie, right? Because it's important to understand the major historical events. But most of our students do not have history background. So not to worry. As I was saying in the earlier talk as well, some of our students, some of our PPGA students are from the sciences. So they did maths, physics, chem, econs, and suddenly they did public policy and global affairs, and they do okay as well. So you do not need... What, what you need really is a thirst for knowledge about public policy that's what you need if you don't have that then you shouldn't do ppga yeah, yeah very true very true uh well there, there's a few more questions let me just move on to the next one yeah. i think this is more about um how to get into ppga right so the question goes um ppga is competitive oh, it's, it's a competitive course um to get into but uh yeah. they want to ask they want to know what's the uh how much percentage should their grades versus their portfolio matter so like should they have like internships or should they be in MAN, for example, or CCAs and uh, personal statements from their lecturers. How, how, how does this play into helping them get accepted? Right, so that's, that's really an excellent question. So I wouldn't like grades definitely matter, right? So, and it is, it is one of the most important things, but it's not the only thing that matters because we also have the uh, aptitude-based admissions, right? So we look at everything, right? So grades for sure. So I won't lie, it matters a lot. And we have the indicative grade profiles. It's on our website. You can see them. Uh, for PPGA, uh, it's quite competitive, more competitive than the other uh, majors. Um, but we also look at, because we, as PPGA students, and Yongchen is a first, ma first major sociology, so he would understand this even more, right? That we understand that grades at 18 or 19, it's also reflective of your socioeconomic status. We, we should be aware of that more than anybody else in any major in any university. So, so C and PPGA students and faculty. So we understand that. And that's why for us, we look at the, the portfolio as well. So whether it's VIA values in action, your service commitments, uh, your CCAs, your leadership. Uh, if you have internships, letters of referral, uh, of course, the referee letters, they, they matter as well. So we look at everything. At the same time, we do look at grades as well. I hope I answered the question. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a uh, quite a succinct way to put it. I, I myself personally didn't really 
uh, do very well when I was in poly, but I still managed to uh, get into uh, into sociology. And then subsequently, I did my uh, second major in uh, PBGA. And I think, you know, your grades at uh, when you're 18, 19 doesn't really matter as much when you're actually in the university itself. My oh, grades in the past are indicative of what I'm, how I'm doing right now. And by the way, can I just add that like, Ching is doing really well and he has just been recently nominated to be a valedictorian, one of the four nominees for the valedictorian of his batch for triple S. Yeah. So so he is right. And people develop differently, right? There are some people who uh, at PSLE, their scores were really high and then by the time they reach A-levels, it's not that high and, and vice versa. So, uh, so yes, we do look at everything else as well. Yes. Well, th thanks, uh, Prof, uh, for that answer. The next question we have is uh, whether or not PBJ gets to, PBJ students get to specialize in a particular subfield or domain for the four years. I guess sort of a valid question because our name is Pipe Policy and Global Affairs. So yeah. the question is, is there a specialization? Yes. So you don't have to. So you don't have to. In the past, you had to choose a track, public policy or global affairs. So public policy or one of the three, right? Uh, any, any combination of the three, IR, CP and political theory. And so this will be under global affairs. But now you don't have to. So you, you can informally specialize in the sense that after the core modules, all the modules that you do are public admin modules or all the modules that you do are these three. So you can informally do that, but you don't have to. If you choose to do that because you have, eye, you have your eye on one particular employer or industry, that's fine. We allow for that as well, no problem. But there is no such requirement. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think that's very true. Um, I myself um haven't really taken much uh, international relations mods, uh, right. mostly on public admin, public policy. But I I do know that there are core causes that force you to do yes, uh, correct. Yeah. So you do need a basic understanding. Right. Basic understanding for sure. So, but beyond the core causes, you are free to choose whatever you want. Yes, definitely. Uh, well, the next question we have um actually pertains to something that you said previously. So the question is, I guess the person asking is um sort of worried. So she says that, uh, uh he or she says that it's uh you know you mentioned that uh for advice for people who are shy, right? So being vocal or like you know arguing in class is a yeah. is, is is something that you must do in the program. So what 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 sort of advice would you have for okay. other students who are every, every semester? Thank you for that question. Really. So every semester I will get uh, a few people who come up to me and say that this 20% is too daunting, right? So can you change the assignment? And my answer will be no, because I really want you to learn from this. Then the next question they'll say, so what do I do about it? And then I'll give them some tips, right? So one of the one of the first, uh, the, the first thing I tell them is to be as prepared as possible. Right? Be as prepared as possible. Um, so you come in for the tutorials, with the tutorial questions, you have a list of things, information, or knowledge that you want to share, you want to argue based on. That's the first thing. Second thing, have the understanding that if you are in uni, right, they are your peers. No one is much smarter than you. Right? And usually the shyness comes from the fact that uh, what I'm going to say, is it smart enough or what? It will be smart enough. It will be smart enough, right? You may not think, you may, oh, maybe you came from a neighborhood school or whatever i came from a neighborhood school right so i came uh from uh one of the lowest rank junior colleges right i was came i came from tampines jst right but when when you're in uni you're in uni you are all at the same level you are uh you're up here the final one is the uh the practical one i tell the shy ones right be the first person to speak up for that particular tutorial before everybody else builds and then there's more pressure on you right so when the the lecturer or the teaching assistant asks, okay, anybody has any thoughts, be the first person to speak up, right? And then you share whatever you want to say, let others build, and then you relieve yourself of that pressure. The moment you start speaking up in class and you start to see that, hey, actually I made sense, then everything else will become easier after that. Yong Chen, do you want to add to that? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think uh, uh, what helps is uh, being passionate about what you're speaking about. I think when you do the course, like if you're passionate about it, then you would naturally want to talk about it, but you know, like you want to, because you have some sort of like interest or passion in the topic that we are speaking about, even if you're shy, uh, I think you can find it in yourself to really want to make your voice or opinion heard, or you want to ask more about the uh, um, stuff that we're talking about. So, you know, you, you naturally want to sort of do it. So like cultivating that sort of passion for the topic at hand is I think quite important as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And then uh, maybe we move on to the next question. So I'm just going down these questions by uh, votes. Uh. So like if you guys want to, uh, any questions that you see that, that is very interesting and you really want us to ask it, um, just upvote it and then I'll ask them. So uh, the question I have here is, uh, 
oh, well, our le- PPJ lessons more lecture or seminar based because it seems that lessons are quite interactive in general. Right. Okay. Uh, excellent. So at the level 1000 module, so the core modules, they are lectures and tutorials. So one hour of lecture, uh, two hours of lecture and one hour of tutorials. Uh, so these are the lower level modules. At the higher level modules, they're all seminar based. So you will have like the entire, so for the, the level 4000 is four hours. So four hours of discussions amongst 20 people, right? So everybody will have plenty of time to speak, right? But even in the lectures, and I think Yong Chin can attest to this, our lectures are also interactive. I have all sorts of experiments that I do in class and <laughs> prisoners, but I'm not going to tell you guys what they are in case I give the game away if you come to NTU. you. But Yong Chin has been a <laughs> victim or recipient of the <laughs> I've learned of the uh, experience. life lessons. <laughs> so yes, so we do a lot of, and even I always go back and forth with my students during lectures. So the lectures are also not, not the standard like JC lectures. or uh, I don't know how it goes in police, but JC lectures are quite, quite one way. Uh, or even maybe huge, huge classes. So even our lectures are still 100 people. So it's still, there's still enough room for to be interactive. It's 1,000 people, that's, it's impossible, right? It's just a structural thing. Uh, so yeah, our lectures uh, are still interactive, but at the higher level, levels three and four, for sure, it's completely interactive. Yes, uh, thanks thanks for that, uh, Prof. I, I do agree. Um, our lectures can be very interactive, yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Our next question about politics. So I think uh, the asker is saying that, you know, we mentioned US politics in our discussion and in your presentation, right? Uh, so they want to know whether we're talking about uh, domestic international politics or is is, is it like uh, um, international, international sort of politics? Like what sort of US politics or international politics are we talking about? Right, so both. So in international relations, you will deal with uh, US hegemony in uh, in the international scene, so in terms of you know uh, the nuclear race, for instance, and the U.S.-China relations and how it affects other countries, right? So domestically, even in my own modules, right, in my my module parties and elections, I focus a lot on uh, on the U.S. in terms of understanding the electoral college, for instance, and understanding how voters uh, in the U.S. Uh, vote. There is this book that I signed. Uh, Why do millennials? not run for office in the, in the US, right? Uh, and that's a puzzle. And then another one I, I assigned. So this is not in the US, not just in the US, but in the Western world. Uh, why do taller candidates uh, win elections, right? So there are all sorts of things that, that we study, but the US, you can never run from the US because US domestic politics affects the rest of the world for better or for worse. Singapore's domestic, domestic politics doesn't affect the rest of the world. But U.S. domestic politics, China's domestic politics affects the rest of the world. It's very important for us to understand those. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I think U.S. Pol- U.S. is such a big has such a big influence on the world. Yep. Um, well, the next uh, question we have, uh, um, I think, pertains to the assignments for PBJ, right? So um, the question is: Are there a lot of writing or reading assignments in PBJ? And then they are also asking for the typical format of our examinations. Right. Okay. So. So again, this differs at lower levels and higher levels. So at lower levels, you have usually 20%. Uh, and of course, the percentages can, uh, can vary. 20% will be class participation, 40% essay, and 40% exams. And the exams will be essays uh, generally as well. Some, some modules have MCQ. But in the uh, upper levels, you don't have exams anymore. So it will be different forms of essays. So for instance, one is a research essay. Another... It's a short review of the readings that are done. There'll be a lot of reading, although as Yong Chen will tell you, students do not read everything, even though they are supposed to. <laughs> so you'll have to figure out a way to maximize your, your time in terms of being strategic about readings, right? So uh, there will be a lot of reading and there'll be a lot of writing, but sometimes you have creative assignments as well. So in one of my uh, modules, uh, you have a video assignment. And I tell, I tell the students, you can do anything related to any of the lecture. You can do a TikTok video if you want. You can do a, a, a montage. You can do a skit, whatever it is. And I always enjoy that assignment the, the most. Uh, and that's for a level three module as well that I do. Uh, 30% is a video assignment. Uh, so we have different forms of assignment. But the most common one is definitely essay writing. 
Young Chen, you want to add? Yeah, I think in terms of uh, reading, I, I I would say don't be put off by the amount of reading you need to. I think uh, a lot of people will say that, yeah, there is a lot of reading to do, especially in social sciences. I think it's a large part of what we do is to read and understand a lot, yeah. a lot of what people are writing, right? But I think don't be put off by it. I think there are a lot of strategies to do it. So for example, like me and my friends, we do a sort of study group thing where we each read a reading and then we explain the reading right. to each other. So you don't have to read everything. Yeah, so so I would say don't be put off by uh, amount of reading and writing you have to do. It's, uh, it's, it's really quite manageable if you uh yeah if, if, if you just manage your time properly right yeah uh then uh the next question uh pbj students do we have to constantly read up on news to help us in assignments what do you think prof right so uh, i love the fact that the student asked do we have to uh so that's wonderful that person has almost decided that they want to enter ppj uh i would say it's not it's not necessary to get a good grade to keep up with news assignments but to be a truly good PPGA student, I think it is important to keep up with some news at least. It's impossible to keep up with every piece of news, right? But the major world news and the major domestic news, to be a truly good PPGA student, you must keep up with them. That's what I would say. Yeah, and I do remember when I was in your 2011 mod, you actually had a run through of the news for the week, right? Oh, that's true. So I start off every module with this week in the news. Like what are the things that I want them to know in case they missed it, right? So this week in the news, I'll choose three or four important events and how it pertains to that module. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that was uh, quite useful in like, you know, identifying the sort of news you need to keep up to date with. Uh, you know, like, so it helps you as right. a person. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Uh, question about internships. Um, what sort of internships are available for question uh, for students in this course of study? Are uh, there opportunities for student overseas internships as well? Yes. So internships. Uh, I think Yong Chin uh, just now he talked about it a little and he can uh, elaborate more. You do have overseas internships as well. So we have had students who uh, who took either LOA or they 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 had some arrangement with the school to do overseas uh, internships, uh, and that's uh, that's part of our. The, the NTU wider curriculum as well. So we do encourage our students to do that as well. So I, as I mentioned earlier in the in the triple S talk, internships <coughs> will be compulsory for every triple S student. So we will spread them out over the over the semester. So you do it in year two, sem two, or year three, sem one, or year three, sem two, year four, sem one, depending on how the schedule goes, depending on demand and supply. Uh, but every student will be required to do it. And there are plenty of resources in NTU uh, for you to for, for, for you to be helped with applying for internships, right? So, uh, Yongchen, you want to share how you landed those three internships that you talked about? Well, I think, uh, um, I think number one is that um, for me, my internships weren't compulsory yet. But I yeah. think for the new students, they will be, right? Uh, so I did I did those. Um, uh, you don't just have to do one compulsory internship. You can do other internships as exactly. well. Exactly, you know? yeah. yeah. And I think a good starting point to realize, or, or like a good starting point to uh, an internship is to uh, work maybe within the school. I think there are resources that are, uh, CAO office offers a lot of um, these sort of resources, there are career fairs that uh, help you to get internships. But you can work with your professors as well, or you can work um, part-time uh, with uh, NTU's researchers. And that sort of gets you a foothold of experience they can use to secure uh, other more uh, other internships out there. So uh, I did um, a lot of part-time internships during my studies. Um, so you can do uh, part-time internships as well. You just um, look online uh, and then apply right. for the things that you know you want to apply for. I think I think internships are a good way to sort of figure out what you want to do. Um, I think public policy especially um, has uh, it's, it's quite a broad course. So you, you can go into a lot of places and having that, kind of, that sort of internship experience allows you to decide what you want to do with your career. Yeah, so, right. so absolutely, absolutely. So I think that's yeah. that's an excellent point. And I think there are thing about internships as two things, right? One is for an internship is for your prospective employer because it's signaling, right? This person has experience, this person has drive. If I look at Young Chin CV and I see three internships and none of them are compulsory, then I'm thinking this person is really motivated. Right? And the other thing is for you, you do a few internships to see, oh, maybe you thought that this was a ministry for you, but eventually it wasn't. Right. So the internship is for your prospective employer and it's also for you. Yes, definitely, definitely. I, I think I think like looking to secure those internships, I think you really you really have a lot of access to the resources within NTU to help you do that. Yeah, you can ask your professors, you can even ask your seniors. I think uh, um, yes. those who have left their jobs, they can recommend the, another person in. And as I was saying also in the Triple S Club, the student club, 
they have talks where they invite seniors who have graduated uh, who, who are working now or how do you land these jobs or how do you get a foothold so we have all those resources right honestly for me if you wanted an internship while you are in ntu while you are in ppj or triple s you will get it if you try hard enough yeah definitely um well uh the next question we have uh uh, is pertaining towards, uh, I'm not really sure I understand this question, is uh, asking about the difference between um, public policy and globalization. Um, I, I'm not sure how, how we should interpret it. Maybe he's asking globalization studies versus public policy. Ah, okay. So I, I don't know exactly uh, what the question is. So, but if I'm thinking, I don't know whether this interpretation is accurate. Maybe is it the difference between public policy and global studies, for instance? Uh, other universities, maybe they have a global studies uh, program. And from my understanding, at least the global studies uh, program, they are more uh, interdisciplinary. So you'll have anthropology models, sociology models, politics models, and so on. So the nature of interdisciplinary uh, majors is, is good. It exposes you to a lot of things, but you do not get the depth. So you sacrifice depth for breath, right? So that's just that's, that's how it is. Uh, resources are limited, time is limited, you have to sacrifice something. So for PPGA, you go in depth into politics and policy making. So you may not be exposed as much to an anthropology, for instance. But at the same time, having said that, all NTU students have to do ICC modules. These are core modules. There are seven modules that every NTU student has to do, which is supposed to expose you to the major... Uh, major topics that we want students to know about, right? But the PPJA program itself, it focuses on depth about politics and policy making. Okay, I, I think I think that's a, a good good answer for a rather vague question. So if, if you if you if you don't think we've answered your questions sufficiently, you can always uh, post Please. another question and then we can see what we can do about it. Uh, and then uh, this next question I have, uh, I think you can find the information of prospectors, but uh, if probably you want to share some information on it, is uh, is is asking if there are interviews for admission to PBGA? Uh, yes, there are interviews. And uh, the interviews, again, as I said, we will look at, uh, because we do not just want to look at, at grades. As I said, grades are important, but we want to look beyond that as well. So you will have interviews for that. It's for us to assess maybe your passion, your suitability. Is that what you really want? Or are you just applying for the sake of applying, right? Because we also don't want students to apply and then suffer because they realize it is not for them, right? So the interview is also for, for us to tell you what PPGA is about as well. Yeah. Right, I, think, I think this next question uh, is very interesting. I would also like to uh, know more about it. It's uh, your favorite part about studying slash teaching in PPGA. Prof, why don't you uh, tell us what's your favorite part about teaching? Yeah, so my favorite part for sure is, is my favorite part and the least favorite part is also dealing with students. So I learn a lot from students, right? So uh, I debate with the students and a lot of times I think, okay, I didn't think about this. And I would say in since becoming a, a professor, maybe there are two, two or three major things that I have sort of changed my mind on and it's due to cumulative interactions with students, right? So it's not one student per se, but over the years, I've, I've debated with students and then I thought about this, oh, okay, maybe I wasn't thinking about this properly as properly as I should, right? So that's the favorite part. The least favorite part also is dealing with students because you have a lot of idiosyncrasies. <laughs> but generally, it uh, benefits far outweigh the costs. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think uh, students change their mind about TikTok. <laughs> that was be <laughs> <your> conclusion about <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, no I, I think I think, <laughs> I think that uh, what Prof is saying is right. Um, there is a. Uh, I think I think the ability to argue with our professors. It's actually something that is uh, uh, really very useful. I think, um, yeah. It, yeah, it teaches you to, sometimes you would think that, oh, I don't argue my professor, he's always right. Then like, I don't to, you know, argue and then suffer a wrong grade, that kind of thing. But that, that kind of openness about, um, um, you know, like understanding each other's point, perspectives really help you when you go into uh, uh, your jobs, right? So sometimes you have to argue with your boss and then you don't really want to do that. But the experience in PBJ, I think arguing with your professors really do help you um, stand up and say, yeah, you know what, sometimes I'm right. And then like, I want to uh, right. uh, make sure you understand my points. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I think for me, um, studying in NTU, I think there is a lot of uh, uh things to do. I think uh I think part of part of the student life in uh, NTU, there's there's such a wide wide variety, right? But specifically to, uh, PBGA, I think one of my favorite parts is just really learning about, um, things that 
you don't know that much about. I think I think the best part is having a mind change. Um, I think a lot of students come in and then they have a set opinion or you know thoughts about something, and then after that, mm-hmm. when they uh when they actually uh, uh you know like take the course, they actually change their minds on a lot of things. I think uh for me, one of it was uh migration after taking uh, sociology and taking um PBGA uh, mocks on migration. It really did, did change a lot of my thoughts and perspectives to. Uh, uh, you know, like issues of migrations or like issues of production of our um, clothes and everything. And it really did uh, open my eyes to a lot of things. Yeah. So I, I right. think that's the part is that really just learning new things and, and having your mind blown and having your mind changed uh, constantly, right? Yeah. You think it happened once or twice, but it does happen. Oh, so, absolutely. And yeah. it should be, not just now when I mentioned, I have uh, changed my mind, uh, mind on major issues, two or three major issues. But that's because I'm already much older, right? So for me, most of my ideas are set already, right? Uh, so for me to have changed two to three times on, on, two, on two or three major issues, that's a huge thing. But for students, these are the four years which are most formative in your intellectual development, the undergrad. This is where you really expose yourself and you must be as open-minded as possible. And what Yong Ching just said, that is the right attitude to being a social science student, right? You come in thinking you're right, but being very open to the possibility that you're wrong. And a lot of times you'll find that you're wrong on some things or you have changed your mind on some things. Yes. And you'll be glad to have your mind changed. You'll be glad. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the next question pertains to uh, graduation projects or FYPs, right? Uh, what are some examples of uh, FYPs that have been done before? What are the more interesting ones that we've had, uh, Prof? Yeah. So even currently now, I'm look, uh, one of my students is comparing the different strands of uh, Islam in Southeast Asia. So some are more conservative, some are more liberal. So how do you, how do you, uh, what explains why some versions of Islam are more conservative than others in Southeast Asia? Another one uh, that I I was aware of or I supervised was why do coups happen? Military coups happen in some Southeast Asian countries but not others, right? Um, another one is is working on Myanmar and. What are the prospects for peace in Myanmar? Uh, so every year I will get a lot of interesting uh, topics. So another one is uh, that I saw, as in this person asked for me, but I, I was uh, mixed already. So this person is looking at LGBT activism in Singapore. When does it succeed? When does it not succeed uh, in terms of policy change? So you have all sorts of different um uh, politics related FYPs. So, but a lot of them are very interesting. But the, the most important thing about the FYP is yours. You get to choose it. So, you will choose something that is closest to your heart, right? It may be boring to something else, but it'll definitely not be boring to you because you chose it. Yeah. Yes, the freedom to choose, right? Like, I think that's quite important when you're, like, it, like I say, it's the passion to really explore. Yeah, because there are days that you don't want to write. The only <laughs> thing that gets you through is, oh, I actually like this topic, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I understand completely. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so um, this question, um, I think uh, we have to try a bit lightly, um, but the question is, um, what makes uh, NTU's PBGA, or I think I'll, I'll ask, asking about political science or international relations, um, different or unique from other schools, right? What, what makes our program better? Uh, not better, but um, unique. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe in the question, the person mentioned uh, the, uh, the, the universities as well, or... Uh, no, no, just no, okay. right. So if if people came here looking for tea, right, and uh, looking for me to this All other, right. you're from NUS. No, that's right. I was from NUS Paul Science, yeah. right. So I don't have a bad word to say about NUS Paul Science, right. So uh, don't don't expect me to say, oh, we are we are much better. It's a terrible department. So I don't have a bad word to say about NUS Paul Science. Uh, of course, I'm in NTU now. I would say you should come to NTU. But the difference between NTU, uh, PPGA, and NUS Paul Science maybe is that NTU PPGA is more uh, is less theory focused than than NUS. But this these are a matter of small differences. So so I would say that uh, both are good uh, good options. Obviously, I want you guys to come to to NTU. Uh, the other difference, the other unique selling point of NTU PPGA, I would say is. Uh, ours is a smaller cohort size. So our our batch uh, students kn- all know each other. Uh, we have a very vibrant PPGA subclub. They have all sorts of univers- uh, all sorts of events. Uh, the professors are all very approachable and they always uh, they all know the students as well. As I said, uh, students come over to my house 
at the end of every semester, those who do my modules, they are invited to my house. They can come in different batches. Uh, and this wouldn't be possible if I were, if I had 200 students, for instance, which may be the case in other universities. So the those, I would say, are the unique selling points of NTU, PPJ. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I, I, I too did um, um, an exchange in NUS um, for pipe policy as well. And I think uh, I do agree with a lot of what you do say. Yeah, we, we do have a smaller size and it, it's, a, it's a lot more um, closer. Yeah, but I, I, I do, yeah, the, the differences are not that right. much. Yeah, right. Right. in yeah. terms of content at the very least. Uh, yeah. Well, I think, uh, Prof. Wallet, thanks for your time. Uh, actually, you come to the end of our session. So unfortunately, it's all the time that I have had for today. Uh, but I, I would like to thank uh, Prof. Wallet again for his time. And then uh, uh, just to let you guys know, if you guys have any more questions that you really want to ask, you can go on to our NTU Open House website and then look for uh, the PPGA. We actually have student assistants in uh, the next room ready to answer your questions um, if you have them. Yeah. So our next talk and will thank, be... Thank, thanks, Yong Chin, for yeah. answering the questions as well. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. Yes. Uh, our next talk will be a brief look at NTU Psychology. So uh, if you're on the micro site, you can actually view the list of our talks for uh, COHES, which is the College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences today. Right. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, thank you, Prof. Wallet, again. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.